things to the table of being able to support, being able to roam around everywhere. Actually, we are his brother, Sumail, a uh, person we normally do see playing up on that mid role, played up a phenomenal support wiki yesterday morning as well. So good on him and the ban coming through definitely more than warranted. Terrible. That ban took a little while too long to take though. Ariana Celeste perhaps not being as quick with his fingers, as quick with the bands as he needs to be. The reserve time already being dipped into. There's a bit of an issue over here. Five seconds remaining. Five seconds remaining for the pick time for Rihara as well. And his reserve time is considerably more limited considering that Grant did actually end up producing him and Ariana Celeste asking the important questions whether or not alchemist is autobahn or not i don't think he will be alchemist should be able to be snagged up by either team at some point but so far yeah we taking his time when letting the reserve time whittle down already down to a minute 10 and yeah does not give a reply just quite yet it was a pink player And it will be okay. So Emma says calls it out, says that Alchemist in, in is indeed auto banned up. So neither team has access to it. It's like the gear is out of the game. It's a bit of a disadvantage for the Radiance for the die side who do have first pick going their way. If they were able to snack up the Alchemist, I feel like they'd be more than happy with that hero on board. Five seconds remaining. Five seconds remaining, and they need to decide their ban coming out of here. It could be a dark seer. I know Kezu has a dark Kezu has one of the best dark seers I've ever seen. Man's an absolute beast, and there's already cause of him being a tier one off laner. And after TI might actually migrate to some team other than that. That's gonna be the dark seer ban coming through. And Kezu after TI might end up migrating out of escape gaming unless the ties to Sindarin are a bit too strong, but they do go further than we do expect in TI, which is a, definitely a possibility. Both those things are very strong possibilities. Welcome to the stream, Mr. 2805, the Phoenix being the pick coming out of Yawar. And at this point, Ariane Celeste needs to decide whether or not he wants to snag up the faceless void for himself. It's probably not going to be the case. And Yawar will be able to go for a Titan tree, even if the faceless void is picked up. And the unlikely scenario where Ariane chooses to go for both faceless void and Titan tree is something that we're probably not going to be seeing come up right over here although it is a possibility sending one of them in the off lane and sending one of them in the safe lane is definitely viable but probably not something you'd want to be looking towards doing not that it isn't confusing him for a while he does end up picking up the faces void but he pairs it up with the disruptor the elder titan is indeed apparently too broken alchemist though i've, I've got to say we saw the alchemist being picked a while back in the north american elite league yesterday just yesterday actually elder titan is picked quite a bit both those heroes tend to lose quite often i think it's more that both uh, these guys just don't have any any good idea of what they why we playing to have fun north america and the nel i don't believe it has a prize pool as well dire team ban and now the earth spirit getting picked up by yawr not the tide hunter so the tide hunter ban should be coming through very very soon the support that is considered broken in so many regards being prioritized by yawr who's going to be playing that up i think it's going to be pandago from Formerly from Ehug, and, Ar and Arteezy should be able to pick up the core position that he's most clearly the, the he's best suited for. Rami, I'm going to be disconnecting pretty soon. Can you calm down the viewers and let them know nothing's wrong when that happens? It's just my scheduled router reset, and when that does happen, it does take me a couple of minutes to get back on to the internet. <coughs> 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 Well, that being said, the Die Hunter and the Timbersaw bands coming out. Juggernaut as well being taken out of the pool from Yawr. Not wanting that 
quick attacks read coming out against the phoenix it maybe goes for the life leader ban but instead it will be the death prophet fearing the faces why death prophet disrupt a combination that's just also very potent and at this point, Dyer, they're just well, trying to take up uh, heroes that synergize well with Phoenix and the Earth Spirit because there's already so many carries that Gower can't really go for. My cat is on heat. I am lying. My cat's very much on heat. It's, it's as heaty as cats get. Or whatever that means, but it's, as, it's very heaty. Well, that being said, um, back towards the game and back towards these cats and what they're going to be doing. And if they are feeling like they are hot stuff. Oracle. Mm. Radiant team pick. Now, Oracle being picked up over here. Just another great support coming out not that much lockdown outside of the faces for the ultimate though the kinetic field and the static storm are nice but sometimes you just need cold hard stuns to be able to deal with a couple of heroes life shooter still in the pool could potentially be going for that but i really doubt it it's not very good against the disruptor but not the greatest against the faces void or even the oracle for that matter so they've got to be considering other op possibilities and right now first of all they need to be considering picking up something for the offlane the clock is available i think the clockwork could be one of those picks that is working so could work surprisingly well for case over here of course probably not one of those picks that they will end up going for so we'll have to wait and see 30 seconds left on the clock for that reserve time whittling down little by little whittling little <laughs> rhymes and they do end up going for the slada it's a good pick coming out against the faces void it's a easy way to brush him down if they're able to Heard that up with the life shooter, that would be great. But so far, the life shooter not being the greatest pick in Slardar. I've got to say, he just seems to be a little bit underwhelming unless he's got someone to get inside of him. And that someone is more commonly than not the life shooter. At this point, Ariani has got more than enough time on the clock to consider what he wants to be going for in that mid lane in that safe lane position sven is of course available it's not it's pretty good against the star there the war cry is pretty solid at increasing everyone's armor and making sure that they're tankier for just for the few seconds of a team fight that can be absolutely critical other than that those Sven could end up being instrumental at killing up that egg of course he's a natural echo saber builder so that those few attacks that he will be getting out are very very are very very important for the purpose of the game right now you know what i find creepy i find it creepy that mobot shows me crimson deeds color as orange but twitch chat itself is showing me his color as green and i am getting severely creeped out by that what's my color let's find out okay i'm purple over here but over there i am okay over there i'm also purple so my color seems to be synergized across all the board i actually like this color so let's see what this gives to me color change 10 seconds okay. remaining not change my color. It changed my color on Moonbot, not on Twitch stream. I, have it. I should probably get back to the game as another hero has been picked up. It is the Morphling. It is going to be the Split Push King himself. It's, um, I don't know. It's, uh, it's good in the sense that they only have one silence and only one, um, Sun coming out of the slide there, they don't have that much lockdown, so Morphling definitely has the potential of getting out of control. But as far as synergy with the faces void and stuff go, there's not that much. The Lycan Throat will be picked up right now. This is a great pickup coming out of Yawr. And obviously if this goes late, then Yawr is going to be have, struggling pretty significantly. RTZ on that Lycan Arc is going to be having quite a few issues. But right now why I like this pickup is, is that this Morphling will probably take quite a while to get online. And they, they need heroes that can push up early on. Heroes like the Terror Blade, heroes like the Lycanthrope, which are in fact... Which is in fact going to be the pickup coming through the Invoker, immediately being banned out by Ariane, though he doesn't want to be playing up against that Ford Spirit Might and the Deafening Blast, the Ice Wall, the Tornado, and what, God knows what else the 
Invoker does bring to the table. Ten seconds remaining. And the right inside, they're setting up the fifth ban. Five seconds remaining. What do they go for? It's gonna be the puck that they ban out. It's a good ban coming through, considering that they, the dire already have two very farm hungry support, farm hungry cores, and a third one really wouldn't land too well in the mix but Pac would have been a perfect pickup for them giving them some initiation outside of the face as well it gives them a decent laner against the tinker as well so right now the tinker being picked up this gives them some light game and this gives them the ability to have a fall black plan in case lycan isn't able to help them end the game by 30 35 minutes when the Morphling will start to hit critical mass, and that's when the Tinker comes in. That's when the Tinker's burst damage should be very, very useful. Welcome to the stream, Monkey King Bar. Good to have you here. Ten seconds remaining. And, oh, dude, this is not something we see every day. It will be picked up by Ariadne. And Odie, one of those, one of the few heroes that can actually outlane a Tinker, but can he do just that? But the changes to the astral imprisonment and the nurse to the aura, or perhaps it was the orb coming through. Odie's really fallen out of favor in the meta game. We'll have to wait and see whether or not he can actually be effective on this hero. And interested to see how this ends up going now. Kaizu is going to be on the Slarthor as predicted. Gaiken going to be played up by Yawr Arteezy on the Tinker. And finally, we do have the Earth Spirit being piloted up by none other than MSS on the die side. We have Ariane Celeste on the OD, RWO on the Oracle, Fluff and Stuff on the Disruptor. Saint Seiya returns on the Morphling and finally bot lane. Is going to be the faceless avoid Z talk picking up the core position for the first time I've ever seen in North American League. He's generally very, very good on the support role, but this time perhaps not having the full confidence in the lineup that he has been presented with. But you have to play with the cards you're dealt. And right now, I've been dealt some pretty poor cards myself. I can't actually click anywhere on the map. Ah, uh, what if I do this? Yep, still can't click on the map. That's going to be pretty frustrating to deal with. And let's see if we're able to find out a way to work around that, though. We should hopefully be able to do just that by clicking on the portraits and moving around the map in that sense. But uh, it's definitely going to be a little bit of a hassle. Let's wait and see what happens. So with this, it's a bit of a glitch going on. And Dota TV do, does have some issues sometimes, and maybe if we, we can't even throw a ping, so we can't click on the map at all. Registering this, I can't throw on the map, so any clicks I'm throwing out on the map just aren't registering. <laughs> Meanwhile, though, Ariane Celeste picks up that bounty room. Phoenix not able to Icarus dive in and try to get that for himself. I don't, okay, so apparently, I think it's Bulba. I don't know who Bulba is. Wait, Bulba is just named Bulba, isn't he? I have no idea. Anyway, now, bot lane, MSS having gone for the Howl first, gonna be helping Tinker out just a little bit in terms of the last hits once he gets to the few waves. Should be using that up, and MSS are now RTZ with the Howl damage as well. They're gonna be getting those denied onto the Oh, World Devour, out World Devour, not able to get any last hits whatsoever in the first wave, but RTZ on the other hand, gonna be able to get all that he wants so far. RTZ dominating this lane, it is only one wave in, so you never know. The deny comes to now, RWO, he's here, he's got the fortunes end up and ready, he doesn't want to be channeling that up pretty soon, but RTZ looks like he doesn't really care too much about this. Now, bot lane, that's gonna be where the rest of the action is at, as Z talk. Just casually sitting down over here, just making sure that he is able to pick up some experience, pick up some farm, pick up the advantage of great inside supports being over towards that mid lane. Even Keizu having gone starting up in the jungle from scratch, the Iron Talon going to be more than useful in doing just that. RTZ is still very dominant, leading the CS battle. Saint Seiya returns close behind though. 8 for 4 on him. Magic 1 being the first pickup for him. And RTZ mid lane will end up 
going very, very low. The Fortune's End did come through, but unfortunately doesn't get the kill just quite yet. Now over here. Ah, uh, it's gonna be gone on once again, the fortune then comes in, that's gonna be all she wrote. First blood goes the way of the oracle. Odie would have liked to have it, but unfortunately, we'll have to be content with the experience and with the few seconds without the Tinker consistently throwing out lasers onto him. Now we're immediately going in towards that mid lane. Getting some of that experience, making sure that Arteezy's death is compensated a little bit by the experience on the Phoenix. He needs that level 2 for the Sunray fairly desperately at this point, so he can try and get a kill onto the Outworld Devourer as well. OD using the salve as soon as possible, and now suddenly I hear a stun going off that's going to be Slaughter just farming away in this little crevice, making sure that he takes as little damage as possible. Kezu, unfortunately, not able to do just quite that yet. Pandago gets a stun onto Celeste. So Pandago did end up swapping heroes. MSS is going to be on. Okay, so it's MSS on the Lycanthrope, Pandago on the Earth Spirit, like we initially expected, and Yawr playing up the support on the Phoenix. I don't know what's up with all these players playing support who normally don't in the NEL. It just seems weird to me. RTZ 14 for 7. On this tank, uh, and Ariana Celeste, he's just getting absolutely outlaned at this point. Artizi was probably one of the best one-on-one -on -one players in the game a few years ago, and Artizi is showing just why that was. Now, trading hits over there, perhaps not the wisest decision against the orbs of the uh, will devour. Only one point in that, though. He has no points in the essence aura. Right? This is. This is looking very questionable. I don't know what to say about this. This just doesn't look like a good build for me. He has two points in stats, maybe? I honestly can't tell, but right now, RWO, they're going on to RTZ. RTZ gets out the laser, but the purifying flames is going to be all they need to get the kill. A good kill coming out, and the ward vision really showing it's or lack thereof showing itself on the radiant side. They did have their wards dewarded, and that's event. That's exactly what ends up happening. Your mid is just so susceptible to ganks, especially when he doesn't have an inbuilt escape like the Tinker, of course. Before the boots of travel, before the blink, not very slippery at all. Very, very easy to catch up actually. And now top lane, Bandego getting glimpsed back, getting the rolling boulder cancelled out, stuns is thrown away and now purifying flames healing him up he does manage to juke into the trees wait what they don't know where he is and they go what a player but in the meanwhile tinker takes apart the outward devour in the mid lane with the help of his rotating in he did manage to get up that stun and they go though manages to make his way Pandega, that was very good. That was actually very good by Pandega, but bot lane is some more action going to be had. Z-Talk trying to get a couple of bashes out. And now throws out the Kronos for you. MSS might just end up going down over here. One more bash is all he needs. Now, time walks himself forward. One more right click. Z-Talk, he can't close the distance just quite yet. MSS might have just turned around, got him with one right click, and that would have been a kill going his way. It is a one for one, but with the experience also going in, MS, in the favor of Z-Talk, that's going to be a bit of a no-brainer about who wins that trade. Now mid lane, Phoenix perhaps looking to rotate onto this outworld devourer who doesn't have a single point in astral imprisonment. And without that, he's just so susceptible to ganks over here. Rolling forward, it's going to be the Pandago. He gets a stun out, doesn't actually choose to use it yet. The RWO's TP has been forced and they're going to be content with just that and backing themselves off in the meanwhile. Z-Talk gets back towards his bot lane, is going for the... Oh god, dude, the second I move, the second I look away, now blink of the glimpse back onto RTZ. He's being healed up, fluff and stuff, will be able to get himself away, the TP coming out and they've got no way of stopping it. No boulder smash for a few more seconds. Nyawa using the Icarus dive, using the Sunray to be able to get himself onto the Logan, get himself back to base, pick up those Tranquil Boots. 
And in the meanwhile, Malfang just turning on that Aquila, split pushing away, doing whatever he can. Void as well, taking advantage of the lack of Lycan, who has been forced back into the jungle at this point. MSS, not too happy with whatever's going on for him over there. Not too happy at all. And it will be the Phoenix, back, sitting back in the lane, a bit crippled, who's holding out his hand as he does. Turn back towards that lane, Pandego in the top lane. He's the real winner of the situation, getting almost level five, so eight minutes in. He should be able to get a very timely level six, and that will be the big go call for a lot of this game. And Ariane is less still, just being absolutely outlaned by the Tinker. Three deaths so far on him, no kills participated, and the only kill happening onto the Tinker in front of him at least was in fact the first blood going away well actually first blood and later on second blood as well going on to RTZ smoke up from RWO flop and stuff as well brothers in arms they're going on to Heizu goes in with the chronosphere they're gonna be able to get an easy setup for the fortune zen not channeling it out quite all too long enough and Disruptor gets the kill, the Thunderstrike will be able to get that up for him. He will be traded out though in the mid lane, they're going in, Pandago misses the roll. RWO with the TP in preemptively already, realizing that they were going for the OD in that mid lane while top lane. Once again, Morphling 62 last hits on him, he's farming it up an absolute storm. He's actually followed up by the Aces Void, a bit surprising considering that the Lycanthrope has been jungling a little bit as well, so you'd expect him to have a lot more lost hits than that, but MSS very clearly not getting all that much done just quite yet. Zetok over here getting rolled up on, but the Amplified Damage not going to be helping him them too much when he time walks all the damage they deal to him anyway. The Disruptor also in the back lines, he's just there to make sure that he can get a glimpse out. I think he was able to glimpse, get a glimpse onto the Slada. He might have TP'd his way down towards that bot lane, but Heizu finding the Disruptor, welcoming him with loving arms, and those arms aren't very loving or very welcoming for that matter. Arteezy. Okay, apparently... Dark Green is stream typing. I should probably check the chat to see if he is over here. Yeah, the two Peruvians are doing pretty damn well. I mean, I don't really know who the Peruvians are though. This is getting really hard to do camera control without being able to click on the map, to be honest. Um, and so far, I've got to say, dude, this. OD, I don't know what he's doing, man, with this skill build. This is 102 skill build. There is no way that this is what you're supposed to be going for. I mean, right now, it's just looking to be a bit rough. And I'm now Faith is Void once again with the Chronosphere up and ready. He wants to be doing something maybe in towards that mid lane where there are three people clumped up from the Radiant side. And Arteezy already perhaps preemptively predicting that they're moving into their own jungle. Zetok gets silenced up. He will be caught out by the boulder smash as well. The long range missile coming through. It's only a level one missile though. And Zetok able to get himself away to safety. And Arthur going to be happy with the stacks that he has accrued up. In the meanwhile, Morphling 8T for 24. He's going for the Lincoln Sphere first. Not that many great abilities to block out, but there are, of course. Well, there's, it's just a great item on the Morphling anyway, it's uh, some solid regeneration, some solid stats. All things that the Morphling so desperately needs, and, and this guy's build is really triggering me, honestly. If this is Bulba, this, you're absolutely right, this is just a complete throw. I'm just gonna find out who this is. I really hope it's not Bulba. Okay, it isn't Bulba, I think this is Dota, the two, and... Optizi goes down, Ariana Celeste gets that kill, Yawr as well. So it's gonna be a double kill going the way of OD. This is not Bulba. <clears throat> this is Dota the two. Since I know everyone else other than him. So, oh, it says that Dota 2 was in 
was in the thing, was in the game, so probably him. I am walking forward the face as well, trying to keep up his farm now. Slip behind them off the like a little bit in terms of last hitch, but net worth, he's still up there, he's still second in that regards. Now with the <clears throat> headdress into well hand of Midas into a headdress. If he's going for a mechanism, this is not the build. This has not been the build for the past however many years. Ever since the nerf to OD where items no longer triggered anything. That has not been the build while top lane say so trying to get away barely is he able to do so with his life he's just a sliver of hp 10 to 30 if i'm not wrong and now it's going to be disruptor who's running into rtz rtz immediately uses the soul lane immediately uses the march the games comes back fluffing stuff a little bit too premature on that now bandago going forward gets silenced up as well fluffing stuff trying to do whatever he can jukes in the tree line he's got Back up in the forms of the Oracle. Oracle though got stunned up by the Boulder Smash and RTZ is able to get that kill up. A few more right clicks and they will be traded out though. And RWO trying to do whatever he can. But Keizu goes in, gets a stun out. RTZ lives with the sliver of HP. That sliver will be taken away from him. Ariani Slash with a double kill. With the killing spree, pardon me. Now he's just fighting up against Pandego. But keizu has got the mana. He's going to be able to get the stun. And OD will hit the deck. And RTZ CS. Definitely up there. Oh goodness, suddenly the faces boy dropping bombs. I had to say that. I, I, it's not every day that you get to say something like that to RTZ of all people. <laughs> I don't even care if I get shut down for this. I am, I am happy. All that matters. <laughs> uh, that being said, Grim's back onto the Yawar Phoenix and he's gonna be torn apart right there and then. And I mean, I've got to say, despite the wonky draft, the Dyer is doing pretty well. I have talked a lot of um, smack about Ariane Celeste and him doing poorly, but he's sitting 3 for 4. He's recovered pretty nicely for himself. The Midas is going to be helpful, and now whatever this is going to be, I don't even know what these two are supposed to combine to become eventually. But right now, the true players of this game are definitely the Morphling and the Faces White. Faces White somehow actually had being in the lead for net worths. Top 3 off on the die side, though. And Z Talk. Getting healed up quite a little bit from the purifying flames. The last hit gonna be going his way as well. Just the lead, even against his own morphling, going and growing. The might is really paying dividends and double heal coming through. Is he talking to be tanking out of for that? Well, in the parasite jungle, the smoke can cast come through. The smoke will be popped. Keizu, blink dagger up and ready. Blink sword at the exact right location. Gets a stun on Johnny Celeste. Will end up taking a fall, pings out and says that there is no way he got that perfect of a stun off. Unless they have a ward there, and that ward is not actually placed down. Aren't easy keeping his way towards the top lane. Boots of travel now up and ready. And in doing and then performing that smoke gank into the die side jungle, they actually end up dodging a gank coming out from the die side themselves. OD dies, and that's all people wasting a lot of time. They're heading, they're making their way downtown right now though, and walking fast, faces are passing by, they miss them, Eizu gonna be caught up by the faces, Why the bash comes through the waveform, gonna be able to finish him off. Yawr, going in towards the hand of Midas for himself. And faces while trying to pick up that blink dagger as well. Midas up and ready should be using it pretty soon. Uh, has delayed just a little bit, but ends up picking that up in a timely manner. Z talk getting himself backed off, making sure he's in prime position to try and get out a chronosphere. RTZ sees the cancel animation and is just like, whoop, no, this is not where I want to be coming in. 
He comes in any the way then the Chrono Spray goes out. Not catching Fandango, it's a bit unfortunate, but doesn't matter all that much. Arteezy goes into certain death, and that certain death will be enough to get them a kill into RWO. Zetok is able to dodge out the crush zone. That might be all three. Your Kezu tries to go in for soon, tries to go further deep in, and it's gonna be two seconds on cooldown for the blink dagger. He, the regeneration will also coming out for fluff and stuff. The glimpse will be up and ready for him. He should turn around and goose the glimpse. That's exactly what he does. But blink power from Kezu, he gets the stun out regardless. And now with the sunray coming through the slow from the earth spirit roll will be enough with Seiya, he waveforms himself forward, Keizu gets a stun out, Seiya has barely got any mana, he's not going to be able to get himself away that easily, he is forced to use that mango for his accidentally even going on to the agility switch and 300 HP is all he has, the mango saving his life over there, a great value pickup for him, and overall a decent team fight from the Radiant side, but Arteezy going down is definitely not ideal, not ideal at all. He's gonna be a hundred gold away from the blink dagger. We'll be able to pick that up with one more last hit, and that's exactly what's gonna be happening. Blink dagger from the side shop. Necro two on the Lycan's rope. Six hundred gold, and he has a full Necro three. You're gonna be having that in a minute or so. Despite the shaky start, he's made his way back up into the top three of the net worth. Definitely, Emma's is playing very, very well over here. I'm not sure who he's talking to. Okay, he's talking to Grand Grand. Okay, that's fine because I didn't even see an adaptive strike coming out to be honest. Apparently, Grant has different ammo control from me. It's okay. It doesn't really matter. I think mine is better anyway. Like, if nothing, like say what you want. My camera control. If I have the full functionality of a camera and I can click on the map and I'm not too sleepy to be missing kills, can be pretty solid. Right? I've got my viewers, he's got his, and that's for a good reason. Welcome to the stream, those of you who are just tuning in. Good on you, good on you indeed. And Right now it's going to be Saint Seiya returns, 2400 gold, he actually ended up going for a Ghost Scepter first, might even choose to finish out that Ethereal Blade, the way he's been fighting up with his team, he's only got one kill but he's been coming to these team fights and that would be helped out considerably by the Ethereal Blade, no level 4 adaptive strike just quite yet though and until he has that the power of the Ethereal Blade can't really be showcased just all that well and now faces white as well. Climbing his way back up onto the top of the net worth chart with the help of that Midas, it's really just kicking it so greatly and Pandago says he has a Midas, I want a Midas at all. As well, sorry. Ariane Celeste going for a very interesting build. I, I don't even know what to say, man. I don't understand this, I, I don't understand the thought process behind this build, to be honest. He's got a Shadow Blade, I, I kinda get that, but... Skill build, really? This isn't Bulba, by the way. This is not Bulba. This is Dota the two. Dota DTT. Let's just call him DTT. It's easier than his actual name. But Bulba is not playing in this game right now. Seriously though, I like I like all the picks. But then suddenly the OD comes through. Of all the heroes, the Queen of Pain would have probably been better. Like, sure, right now he's doing fine, but that, that could, he could have been doing that with practically any hero. They're moving into the Roche Pit right now. They're doing quite a bit of damage. They won't be able to pick this up without the Dire Side really figuring out what's going on, what's going on. and with their very lackluster warding, they just think that the uh, Dire Side being headed up by this OD is taking a foray into their own jungle maybe, trying to take control of the Radiant side jungle, trying to soak up all the farm possible and because of that they do end up missing a very large opportunity to fight over there. Perhaps they did realize it and didn't want to fight regardless but being said, Dai do get away with the Aegis going into the hands of the OT and now they're grouping up into this bottom lane as five people but 
They realize that they can't go for this trade. The Tinker going to be doing way too much damage to the Creep Wave. Zetok linking himself forward, seeing if he can maybe get lucky. But now, top lane is where they need to be getting lucky. Blink forward from RTZ into the trees. The stun comes out as well. There is no follow-up though. And now with the Material Blade being thrown out, Tinker is the one who's forced to get the kill onto the Oracle. Lycan was not able to do so. Fluff and stuff going forward needs to be careful. Zetok is able to get it. Ultimate onto Tinker is able to get the ultimate onto Arteezy. Kinetic Fuel Static Storm gets dropped down before the Disruptor does take a fall. So it's one for two so far. Zetok should be able to get away. The Shadow Blade Ariane Celeste comes through. He throws out the ultimate. He's not doing anything in the slightest though. The Age is being expended already and now. Celeste just feeling a little bit underwhelming. Saint Seiya comes back into the game with the Ethereal Blade. Makes it a two for two but with the tier two falling as well. Definitely more than worth it for the Radiant side. Yes, Arteezy takes a fall and this is proving to become an issue. Arteezy is just not able to accumulate the massive level of farm that we do expect from him. He's actually still keeping neck to neck with the Morphling and the Midas that I didn't notice on Heizu also having come out. This is getting ridiculous. I probably accidentally said Bulba at some point. Eevee, don't worry. Z talk with the Midas. Midas on the OD, Midas on I believe it's the uh, Pandago, Pandago actually with the Midas off of cooldown when he dies, it's unfortunate. There's a Midas on Slada, there's a Midas on Phoenix, there's a, half the heroes in this game do have Midas is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, we've got Midas gaming all around. Now it's Ariane with the Mystic Staff on him as well, in boots of speed. Finally, going for more traditional Apple Devourer items. And RTZ is going to be forced to go back to the base once his mana is depleted. Just throwing out a few more marches just to be sure. And Z Talk, Link Dagger, and Yasha up and ready. Indeed, MSS is looking a bit pedestrian as. MG is said, and that's a wonderful little phrase that I need to keep in mind for my casting. Looking pedestrian. He's just walking by while everyone else is riding along the new fangled hoverboards, it seems like. Looking pedestrian. Fun phrase. I like that. I, I, I can live with that. Tink is the one who needs to be living with the amount of farm he's getting though because he's been overtaken by both the Muffling and the Faces Void time and time again and right now Zetok, the Diocite just don't really seem to know what to do, they don't really have to, they don't really seem to have a game plan for this game. Game plan for this game, I should have just said game plan, but they don't seem to have a game plan, they're just trying to farm their way up without any coordination going up. The Lincoln Sphere will be completed on Saint Seiya pretty soon unless he's going for a straight Scotty and just saying screw you to his perseverance. That would be very inefficient though. <clears throat> and then again, sunk cost fallacy dictates that perhaps that is the wiser course of action now. RTZ blinking himself forward, scouting out Seiya, taping away. And the dar and the dark side scan very narrowly being avoided. The Morphling on the top end going forward, trying to get the Ethereal Blade out, the TP onto the Wolves from Arteezy. Now Zetok going forward, trying to get the Chronos Fair out, but Arteezy's positioning is impeccable right now. Lycan's the one who gets the kill onto the Disruptor. Arteezy and MSS getting caught out. A beautiful Chronos Fair going through as well. The Outworld Devourer Hammer has been dropped. Zetok being missing right, takes left, right, and center. He's going forward, blinking forward, predicting where Arteezy is going to be, but sees Heizu coming in now as well. Double kill in the back lines for MSS. Shadow Blade comes through from Ariane. And Saint Seiya going forward. Zero Blade ready, he wants to be trying to get another kill. Might have been able to pick that up as once somehow on the OD goes down to Arteezy. There was a Radiant Sentry Ward in the vicinity and Arteezy is able to take advantage of that. Zetok was scattered out walking by that very ward and now into the trees go Saint Seiya is taking a lot of damage from the marches. He's been right clicked once before Arteezy turns tail and runs from there and now Pandago Baiting himself out with Z-Talk, but Z-Talk blinks away before the 
Slava, okay, so he's able to get the stun out. He's gonna be able to get away scot free. We'll be able to be healed up and fight lives to fight another day. I recommend that Chronosphere coming out. Monkey King Bar, I'm fairly sure I have a profile picture, don't I? Like I might be wrong though, I guess. I, I could I'll, I'll upload a profile picture if I did it if I don't. But uh Teasy. Throwing out the marches as well. The spectators don't seem to be um, particularly amused by this game. <laughs> you know, I probably shouldn't be saying this because I have some North American viewers right now, but I don't know, man. NA Dota just seems to be on such a high horse about itself, despite having basically close to no achievements. I mean, yes, okay, take out EG from the picture, then you've basically got no achievements. If you take out the top European team right now, you still have a plethora of great players. The top, from two of the top three teams of North America are basically composed six out of nine, it's like, I think, Seven out of nine, uh, seven out of ten players are European from those. So, hey, that's 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 that. And now, Oracle being body blocked up by the wolves. Zetok will be helping them out just a little bit. The wolves are revealing themselves, and Oracle being forced to heal himself up. Zetok going forward, making sure that. The wolves don't do too much to them, and RTZ getting out a couple of missiles as well, just making sure he gets up a bit of damage. The disruptor, Morphling replicate, going forward, scouting out just a little bit as well. Agnum Scepter being the pickup for disruptor eventually. Right now, the man to keep an eye on should be Hezu, who's the one who's going to be initiating perhaps Bandego. Could also be one of the initiators, please. But right now he's going for his Aether Lens. Keizu could blink forward right now onto three man. Turn, but Zetar going forward gets the corner fair. It's only onto MSS. He's being healed up by the beam. But in the back line, Saint Seiya gets stunned up by Keizu. Keizu gets a kill onto Disruptor, who's not able to get his ultimate off. This could be a great fight for the Radiant side. MSS goes down in the back line. Phoenix Egg also being used up. And now Keizu just being an absolute beast. Saint Seiya takes the fall. It's two for one so far in the favor of the Radiant side. And for once, RTZ does not take a fall. For once, the Disruptor did not get his ultimate off. And now RTZ. We'll be able to get up one more kill for himself as the sun comes through from Keizu on to the Outworld Devourer. Zetox is healing, getting healed up by the Purifying Flames as well. TPs himself down towards that tier 2 tower. That's going to be all they need to try and defend this Manta style being used up as well to try and push this out. Regardless of however farmed he is, he just can't do all that much. However, using the Midas, getting closer towards that Agnum Scepter as well. Now getting on his way towards just another 1800 gold. And I mean, I've got to say, I, I, I really respect MG for this though. That the fact that he's not going to be talking about things that could affect the game. I, I, I really do particularly like that. Let's see. Aren't Persians technically Asian? I don't know, man. Maybe Persians... I suppose if you look back to the history of the Ottoman Empire, the Ottoman Empire did have its hub in Istanbul for, the major, for a vast majority of its reign, so maybe Persians could be considered... But Persians were different. Persians were... A bit early, I think Persians were about 11th century or so. Well, I don't particularly know. Ariani. Well, Tennis is a hex, so he's not doing that badly, and Arteezy's got to be careful that he doesn't get hexed up by the uh, Will Devour, otherwise, this could be a bit of a Congestion point for him. He's already having so many issues being the sole target of Void's Chronosphere 
time and time again and now Void making his way into the Roche pick gonna be slowly but steadily going in trying to do whatever he can but will be scouted out by these wards by these wolves sorry now Ariane as well in the pit he's just tearing apart this Roshan the question is can Arthur make his way down onto that wolf the sentry ward is not in range for it the stun coming through as well the bash was what started it all off a nice chronosphere onto two people but it did catch his od as well so that's a lot of their damage getting out rtz not in range for the hex that's quite yet he gets hexed up the ultimate is there no ultimate coming out from the od just quite yet z talk not falling up on the hex either and it's gonna be mss who ends up finishing off this roshan it's a one for one but the ages going the way of the lichen and now flop and stuff gonna be stunned up no Hezu missing the sun but gets the right clicks that he needs Arthur as well getting the kill onto the Morphling in the back line. This is very hard to camera control in fights just using particular heroes. Hazus in the hunt. So he's going on to Z-Talk. Z-Talk should be stunned up over here. He needs to be careful that he doesn't take a fall. RTZ with one more laser dominating sweep for him. He's just having an absolute ball of a time. And MSS, Necro 3 on him, Auger Club as well. RTZ though, he's the one who's... Well, I mean, he's got 3000 gold on him, he's sitting pretty much happy. And right now, Pink is just... Ariane is just probably feeling a little bit sad that he doesn't have another hero, I think. Perhaps if Zetok had moved in into that fight... Maybe if Zetrog moved in onto RTZ when he was hexed up, that could have been a potential kill onto him. But RTZ is very, very tanky. He's got 2200 HP. He's now got the Dagon as well. 15 Bloodstone charges on him. It's not very easy to be able to bring him down in just one hex without having the Chronosphere. And the Chronosphere catching out the Outworld Devourer was probably a bit of a mistake too. Zetrog having a rare moment of panic. And right now, Muffling. See, the thing is, this guy is basically, when it comes to the pro scene, he is the average standard player that you're talking about. And wait for it, Yawr. Getting himself away. Not going to be able to do that much, but now with the Lycan coming in as well, he's going to be having his safety secured. MSS, no BKB on him, will be guided out pretty well by the kinetic field of the Disruptor. And the thing is that you say that, but you have to keep in mind this is practically an average player. He's just a regular 7,000 MMR player, and you're playing against RTZ, and it is a, it just purely MMR wise. You need to realize 7,000 versus 9,000, that's a large discrepancy. That's like saying 4,000 versus 6,000. It doesn't really come into perspective until you actually think about the increase. Obviously, in terms of an actual percentage, it's not as much. Um, a 2,000 relative to 7,000 is considerably less than a 2,000 relative to that. It's about a 14.7% or something. Sorry, not 14. It's about an 18% increase rather than a 50% increase. But an 18% increase in terms of skill, that's absolutely insane at this level. And now Morphling, it's, he's got his Manta, he's got his Lincolns and his Ethereal Blade, but can he get anything done away? He could just end up taking a fall if he's not careful. Keizu going forward with Morphling, his reaction's a bit too on point. Tinker trying to TP onto the Wolves, does do so, but will not be able to get that Morphling kill. Morphling just goes into the jungle, goes back to farming. 200 more gold is why he's so desperately trying to farm away. He needs that buyback. Now the question is how many people have buyback on the die side, I think. Quite a few do, it's the Oracle and the Faceless Void who are the only ones actually, the big ones who are sitting very close to it are of course the Morphling and the OD, both sitting just about 100 gold away. OD getting up a few more last hits should be able to get that going for himself, Z-Talk should probably let him have it, Z-Talk nowhere near. That buyback, he did choose to go all in onto the damage, choose to go all in with the Diffusal Blade. Now Hezu maybe wants to be blinking in. 
MSS as well, just bashing away onto that tower, not really giving too many dams. The illusion being sent forward, and it's fairly obvious that that is, of course, a Morphling Replicate. No attempts to bait that out or anything of the sort. Morphling in the meanwhile, on the top lane. On the bot lane, we see a lot of damage being dealt out. The Ethereal Blade coming out. MSS could take a fall, but he has the Aegis. Even if he does take a fall, it's not that big of a deal. RTZ has been caught up in the ultimate of the faces for it, but without anyone else right clicking him, he will be able to live to fight another day. The immediate flyback coming out of the OD. Blink forward from Keizu, who's in pursuit of Fluff and stuff. Fluff and stuff will end up going down. The Adaptive Strike coming through as well. Z Dog time walks a lot of the damage, but the Big Bad Wolf is huffing, he's puffing, but will he be able to blow this house down? Looks like that won't be the case. He's going to be forced back to Dark Order, taking a fall in the midst of all the action. Blink backwards from Keizu, he dodges the Ethereal Blade as well. MSS is getting Diffuse Bladed up now. The Hex comes through as well. The stun ball rolling, the boulder smash doing what it can, but MSS takes a fall. They defend one of their lanes of Fraxis. The range does end up falling. Keizu, no blink for about 12 more seconds. He's managed to get the blink away, but in the back lines, that's where Saint Seiya is the one who's going ham. He's going onto a lot of people. Keizu ends up taking a fall to Garda Z-Talk with a blink forward with a time, time walk forward as well. Is he able to get that kill? The sole survivor being RTZ. Agonim's up on him now, though. They do get the range racks, but at what cost? RTZ linking forward. Doing whatever he can, and right now what he can do is quite a lot. Perhaps being inspired by the miracle game that he did. Play yesterday, played up against Miracle in the North American Elite League. A very stacked game that was. You guys should actually check that out. It's in my VODs. If you're enjoying my casting, be sure to check that out and be sure to follow. But back to the game for now. Shameless plugins can be done later on. Arthur. No mod on him. Blink forward from Z-Talk. No blink ready, but he's going to be able to get the Chrono Thread regardless. Martisol has been used up. Needs to get quite a few bashes to be able to get this kill. No mod on RTZ. He should end up going down over here. The Diffuser Blade also going through, but no. The Phoenix Egg. Agonim's coming. has been purchased by Yawr. Now Silence coming out on the Z-Talk. He's going to end up going down. Archer being brought up to full HP. Yawr with a massive blaze. Getting a game-winning ultimate off, that would have been a big kill to get. RTZ would have been out for about 40 seconds or so with the Bloodstone charges that he has accrued up. I believe that would have been a 40-second cooldown. 40-second respawn time, rather. Now Archer looking to get some damage out. Box the Lincolns, and now Saint say I'm opening up. Being forced. To go full strength to be able to survive that gank and now mid lane. The pressure is being put. MSS maybe looks to go towards that bot lane though. And said they are gonna be knocking onto these tier threes and now RTZ going forward gets a immediate kill onto the Oracle, gonna be forcing out the buyback from both Oracle and Faces Void. Zetox still not using a GG well played his calls. And BKB from Saint Say uh, won't be enough. He's gonna be praying to Jesus for that one. Interesting glitch coming through from graphic glitch right towards the end. Ladies and gentlemen, to those of you who are new to the stream, be sure to click that follow button. Unfortunately, I don't think we have any new viewers tonight. We just had the regular.